Well, actually, no, ang uh, ating Pangulo ay talagang on hand po, po rito. Ang talagang puso niya, act, makikita naman, kampanya pa lang eh. Ano sinasabi niya? Sama-sama tayong babangon muli. It is from this theme na kaya kami gumagalaw. Sa totoo lang, ako, eh, hindi na yata ako nakaka-uwi ng bahay ko eh. Dere-derecho eh. No, dere-derecho talaga ito. Kasi ganun kasi pag si Presidente. Hindi natutulog nga. Akala ko nung eleksyon tapos na eh. Yung pala, mas matindi pala nung naging Presidente. Talagang dere-derecho po kami rito. Well, yung kanyang theme going back na sinasabi niyang sama-sama tayong babangon muli. He really takes it to his heart. Wala may iwan po dito. That is why this kind of program, itong LCAC, itong ECLIP, talaga itutuloy namin because what is important here is not It's not the act or gesture of surrendering. What is important is the integration. That they will really feel that government is there for them. As it is for everyone, that is important. ito kayo po ay i-address ni Secretary of the Interior and Local Government, Benhar Abalos. Habang iniintay po natin siya, papahayag ko lang po na nag-cabinet meeting kami kaninang umaga. Nagpresenta po ng mga plano at programa ang Department of Agrarian Reform at saka ang Department of Energy. Nag-status report din po ang DSWD at saka ang housing kasama ang ating bagong kalihim tungkol dun sa mga efforts for during the earthquake and after. Lalong-lalo na ukol dun sa housing. Uh, sila na po ang magpapahayag ng mga detalye tungkol dito. Kung mayroon po kayong mga katanungan sa akin. First question, Marisol Halili, TV5. Hi, ma'am. Magandang hapon po. Magandang hapon. Ma'am, napag-usapan po ba kanina sa cabinet meeting yung tungkol po sa U.S. and China tension? Was it mentioned? What uh, did the president say about it? Did he give any directive? Uh, hindi po siya kasama sa agenda kanina. But did the president give his comment about it? Did he mention anything? Ma'am, pag-ukol sa international relations, parati po tayong nag-iingat. Ngunit uh, suffice it to say, na monitor po ng matindi ang sitwasyon. Uh, wala po tayong reaksyon o statement ukol doon. Ma'am, last na lang po, other okay. issue po. Ma'am, pakilinaw po yung status ng PESA because uh, DG uh, Charito Plaza said that she will not acknowledge the appointed OIC kasi uh, appointed by the Trade Secretary kasi PESA daw po is not considered a GOCC. Therefore, it's not covered by MC1 and MC3. It's a government instrumentality. That was her explanation. So, ano po ang ang estado po ng PESA? Covered po ba siya? Wala po po kasing statement ang ating Pangulo tungkol dyan. Kapag meron na po, itatalakay po natin. Salamat po. Next question, Ivan Mayrina, GMA7. Ma'am, may we get a palace statement on the 6.4 inflation rate for the month of July? Ay, bago pa lang po yan. Sorry, hindi din po natalakay kanina. Pero ilalabas namin as soon as may statement po tayo. Although I understand ang maglalabas po ng, ng statement tungkol dito ay ang DOF. Apo, kay, ano, kay Next sec, question, uh, Vance Fernandez. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, yes. With the recent old taking of new PNP Chief Police Lieutenant General Azurin, what are the president what are President Marcus marching orders for the new Chief PNP? Or does it have any new changes to the internal operation and policies of the Philippines National Police? And did the president move towards ordering the new PNP chief to take a harsher or easier approach? in regards to tackling internal peace and security issues. Any reaction on this? One, we don't normally react. <laughs> but, okay. Uh, there are no marching orders that we know of. Uh, the primary mandate of the PNP is to keep order. So peace and order ang kanilang primary na mandato. Pagkatapos niyan ay sila din po ang primary executors. Uh, they execute the law. 
they enforce the law. So beyond that, the president has not made any other specific orders. Uh, paalala ko lang po, bahagi din naman po ng peace and order, uh, sa peace and order program ng presidente, yung continuity. So whatever it was that has already been there from the past administration, if it works, we continue that program. Next question, Pia Gutierrez, ABS-CBN. Ma'am, magpa-follow up lang po yung sa question ni Maricel tungkol po dun sa PESA. Habang ongoing po itong issue ng leadership sa PESA, sino po ang kinikilalang OIC ng Malacanang? Ang kinikilala natin will be ang kung ano yung angkop under MC1 and 3. At ito po ay si? Sa kung sino po yung OIC. Uh, so, sino po ito, ma'am? Is it... Um, <laughs> OIC Panga or si ano pa rin po, si uh, um, Director General Charito Plaza? Ma'am, like we said, i-apply natin yung MC 1 and 3. Uh, titignan natin yung interpretation ng ahensya. So right now, I still have to find that out. But we have been uh, strictly implementing MC 1 and 3. So ibig sabihin, ma'am, kung sino po yung um, nare-recognize ng PESA. So this is um, Deputy Director General Panga, tama po ba? We will have to see, ma'am. I'll have to get back to you on that one. Opo. But uh, we're firm on recognizing under MC1 and 3. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma on the matter po nung MC1 and 3, mm -hmm. um, can we clarify po talaga if PESA is covered under this memorandum circular? Tulad ng sinabi ko, bago po kasi itong development na ito, bigay ko yung impormasyon as soon as I get it. Pero um, what is Malacanang doing po to clarify the matter? Ma'am, since bago nga po yung development, most likely once it has reached the office of the president or the executive secretary, it will be submitted prior, uh, with the studies and recommendations. Kasi I understand si, um, uh, si uh, Ms. Plaza has asked ES to uh, clarify the matter. Uh, when do we expect po a clarification coming from Malacanang? It will sub be subject to the usual procedures. Once received, the Office of the Executive Secretary will immediately act on it, either by studying the matter and referring it to Deputy Legal, or if the answer is clear already, then they will simply make the recommendations right away. Salamat po. Vince Lopez, Manila Standard. Ma'am, good afternoon po. Maganda hapon. Pwede po makakuha ng information regarding po sa meeting ninyo yesterday with the NDRMC, MND, and FIBOX DOST regarding po sa disaster resiliency ng ating bansa? Ah, kahapon po, ang pinag-usapan ay yung primarily yung responses during the earthquake at may konting evaluations. Hindi pa po ganong, ganong kalaliman, kundi diniscuss natin how things could be, uh, how the things are and how they can be made better, taking suggestions from the other agencies. Since hindi pa po final yung mga pagbabago ng mga procedures, yun pa lang po ang napag-usapan. Uh, ang contribution namin po doon ay kilalanin po yung need for communications, lalong-lalo na doon sa mga lugar kung saan na papatid yung ating mga cell signals. So, ginawa natin uh, of primary concern din po yan. Thank you po, ma'am. Any other? Uh, Nel Maribong, QNTV. Um, natalakay po ba yung uh, 2023 national budget sa cabinet meeting or mapapaaga yung submission sa Congress? Uh, tapos na po yung pagtatalakay in the last cabinet meeting kung saan nagpresenta ang DBM. Binibigyan po ng pagkakataon. Binigyan po kami lahat ng pagkakataon na to fine-tune yung mga yung approved na budget. Kung meron kami mga gustong pagpapago, at kung kakayanin, uh, last Wednesday po yung aming deadline. So, uh, ang gagawin niyan is uh, ayusin ng DBM, pursuant to that kung kakayanin, and then may submission po. And the submission, yes, will be on time. Any other question from Malacanang? Alvin Baltasar? Secretary, magandang hapon po. Magandang hapon. Uh, Secretary, what do we expect tomorrow doon sa pagkikita ni uh, President uh, Marcos and uh, Secretary of State uh, Blinken? Ay wala po talagang uh, published na agenda. So, pati kami, we, we will find out about it if the President decides to address the issue after the meeting. Last question. 
before Secretary Avalos. Yes, Ivan Medina, JMA 7. Ma'am, on the Taiwan situation, ano mm. po ang utos ng Pangulo patungkol sa sitwasyon ng Filipino community doon? Should the tension escalate into actual violent conflict? Sa ngayon po, monitor natin ang sitwasyon. So, magre-react na lang po tayo matapos ang masusing pag-aaral at saka subject to the information that we get from that monitoring. Before that, the President will not yet issue a statement. Tignan po natin kung ano yung mga pangyayari. Nag-iingat po tayo dito sa mga ganitong klaseng sitwasyon. Thank you. I think we can still accommodate one more question. One more. Any other question from Malacanang Press Corps? Maricel Halili, TV5. Ma'am, sorry, if a follow-up ko lang po mm. yun sa inflation kanina, I understand that you will still have to prepare uh, a statement mm -hmm. about that. But is this something that you have already expected, yung 6.4 na inflation? Uh, in increase pa rin po siya despite the fact na yeah. nagkaroon ng rollback sa prices ng petroleum in, in the past few weeks. So is this something that you have already expected? I understand that these were projected even before, given the inputs on international, due to the international uh, events that have led to the increase in the prices of petroleum. So all of this had been factored and in fact was even mentioned in the State of the Nation of the President. So yes, it's part of it. We have expected this. So we'll just wait until it evens out and uh, the details of which should be asked of the DOF. Okay. Any more question? While waiting for Secretary Abalos. Okay, padating na po si Secretary Abalos. May questions pa po ba? Naubos natin yung tanong ninyo. <laughs> Show me. Naku, mahina kasi ako sa showbiz eh. Ah, we have Tuesday new from DZWB. As in, super hina talaga. Oh, yeah. Ma'am, tungkol lang po doon sa social pension for senior citizens. Sabi po kasi ng National Commission for Senior Citizens, most likely next year pa po matatanggap ng mga beneficiary yung 1,000 pesos mm -hmm. uh, dahil wala para fund for this year. But uh, can the government... Uh, parang in a form of ayuda para sa taong ito, mabigyan din yung senior citizens para lang mapuna, mapunuan yung dapat na pondo nilang matatanggap ngayong taon. Ma'am, theoretical po kasi yung tanong ninyo eh. Kaya ba kung ano? So, titignan po natin. But it was not intended to be executed this year kasi tapos na nga po yung budget. In fact, tapos na yung budget for 2023. So, titignan po natin kung paano maipagkakasya. Yung, ano. But we have... We have, since it's a law, it will be executed. Thank you. Secretary, Secretary Abalos. Okay. Um, pinakikilala po natin yung ating napakasipag na kalihim ng uh, Department of the Interior and Local Governments, Benhar Abalos. Hello. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat no? at sa lahat po ng mga nakikinig ngayong uh, hapon na ito. I just want to... Uh, Marge, can, can I get the slides, please? Okay. I just want to report that uh, uh, last week, as about seven days ago, there were about 100 Apusayaf uh, who surrendered in Holo, Sulu. And uh, yesterday, or two days ago, about 50 NPA rebel returnees also surrendered to the fall of the government. I'm going to show to you pictures. The pictures being shown now when I'm in white, those are taken in Cagayan uh, de Oro. Um, most of the, uh, yeah, uh, the, the, the weapons are being destroyed. No? We, we made sure that some of these uh, 
uh, firearms are destroyed. Yan, hawak-hawak ko yung nasirang ano. So, these are rebel returnees, and this is, of course, because of the, our program uh, in the ECLIP, no? the Comprehensive uh, Local Integration Program, this task force. Of course, kasama natin dito ang kapulisyahan, kasama natin dito ang uh, ating mga kasama sa gobyerno, si uh, Governor Roque of uh, Bukidnon, ang DALG family, ang NICA. And what is important here is, ito, ito namang isang picture na ito, uh, ko lang, is this one are the Abu Sayyaf. I, I think this is the biggest or the largest number of Abu Sayyaf surrendered, who surrendered so far? 100, 100 of them. And even the firearms, no? Kompleto po sa firearms po iyan, no? Talagang uh, dyan natin makikita ang talagang samahan ng uh, uh, government, si Sakurtan, si uh, Governor Sakurtan po ang nakasama natin dyan. Ayan siya yung naka-asul. Of course, at, uh, last week kaya, kaya kasama po si General Vic uh, Danau of the PNP. And uh, uh, not only that, uh, kasama rin natin ng uh, iba't ibang ahensya ng uh, government. What is important in this program is surrendering is just one day. What, what is important is after surrendering. And that is what, uh, sabi ko nga, uh, wars are just not won by, by guns. It is won by heart. Especially now that we have a very caring government under the Ferdinand Marcos administration. And we will make sure of that. After this, uh, basic things will be provided. And what is important, of course, is our economy. Para naman mar ma ma maramdaman ito ng ating mga kababayan. So, uh, I just want to report. After this, I've gone to the province of Lamitan. This was last week. Uh, you know, this is because of the Yumol case that, that happened there. I just want to make sure that uh, I, I had a meeting with the different agencies of government with the police and uh, with also with the uh, with the uh, members of uh, the city among uh, empleyado ng city hall at mga, mga tao roon to make sure that it will be very peaceful in uh, in Lamitan in Basilan okay uh, can, can can we turn on the other uh, no pakita naman natin yung by bus natin the drugs can we show it uh, march Okay, I, I'm just waiting for the slides, no? And uh, this time also, this was also last week. Sunod sunod after this is uh, pagkagali namin sa Abra ng Pangulo. I went straight to San Fernando, Pampanga, where again uh, our Philippine National Police, no, had uh, this year. To my mind, it's one of the biggest by bust operation in the amount of 408 million, no. Napaka methamphetamine. But I'm just waiting for the pictures, for the slides. Okay. So, habang wala pa, uh, itong Enhanced uh, Comprehensive Integration Program of the Government, which is ECLIP, this is particularly for the rebel returnees. No? In this case, yung nakita niyo kanina, Andiyan na yung mga kasamahan natin dito sa NPA and of course sa ating mga kapatid na mga sa Abu Sayyaf, no? So when they returned, they will receive immediate uh, assistance, livelihood assistance, and then another reintegration assistance and firearms remuneration, no? Yung mga sinusurrender lang mga armas. Plus, of course, uh, some uh, halfway house for uh, construction. No? At to make sure also, uh, for their safety, babantayan din namin sila. At of course, yung iba pang mga tulong ng mga ibang ahensya ng gobyerno. What is important with this kind of program, mukhang dire-diretso na dahil I've been receiving a lot of invitations. This week, pupunta na naman ako sa ibang isa isang lugar and there will there will, may, there will be another surrender, batch of surrender. At sana sunod-sunod na ito para ang tunay na kapayapaan ay maramdaman na ng bawat isa. So, uh, this is my report in behalf of the DILG. No. Uh, it's the rebel surrenderies, the one in Lamitan, 
and of course the drug bypass. Uh, March, do we have the the slides for the bypass? Um, technical difficulty. technical difficulty. Mamaya ako nila ipapakita. Okay? So yeah, thank you. Yes, yes. We, we are in opening questions for Secretary Abalos. Ms. Tuesday New. Good afternoon, Secretary Abalos, sir. Yes. Uh, with this surrendering of uh, 100 Abu Sayyaf group na sinasabi po ninyo, ano po ang implication nito? Pwede ba nating sabihin na sa mga susunod na panahon, o at least itong taon na to, wala na tayong dapat na asahan na pag-atake ng mga ASG dyan sa Mindanao area? Well, ang masasabi ko lang is that uh, right now, this is the biggest batch of surrenderies, no? Of course, uh, meron pa namang Abu Sayyaf dyan, no? Pero malaki na ang kinahina. I was informed talaga, napakalika na ng kinahina. Uh, napakaganda po ng uh, Sulu. They've got one of the most pristine beaches I've ever seen. Napakaganda ng lupa, ready for agriculture. No, nakahanda na, lalo na ngayon, na Secretary of Agriculture. Walang iba kundi ang ating Presidente. No? I, I'm sure. So, ito'y parang naihahanda na for economic progress. Of course, if there is peace, sunod-sunod na po ito. No? Ang uh, pakakasabi sa akin talagang heavily, halos, hindi ko lang masabi na yung number, pero bababang bababa na po. No? So, I'm sure dire derecho and... Uh, sa ating mga kapatid naman na nasa NPA naman, no? uh, ito ho, dire-diretso na rin. Uh, sana naman sa mga nanonood, nakikinig ngayon, at kung kakilala kayo, mga member ng NPA, sana pag-isipan natin maigi. Ito ang gobyerno, ito'y makikinig, ito'y gagawa ng paraan para naman lahat ng programa ay maibigay sa ating. Kaya there's no more reason para magkumawa pa tayo ng armas laban sa gobyerno. No? I'm sure sa tamang pagtutulungan, uh, talaga magiging very, very successful po ito. Thank you, Tuesday. Ms. Evelyn Quiroz, Filipino Mirror. Good afternoon, Secretary Abalos. Yes, Evelyn. In relation po dun sa na-mention niya na big bus po sa San Fernando, Pampanga, um, may final na po pa kayong kaso against dun sa mga involved and um, matitiyak niyo kasi po ng mga nakakarang administrasyon, marami pong mga drug bus na actually mga mas malaki pa ho dito pero wala na ho eh. Pag, pagkatapos ng ma mahuli sila, hindi na natin nalaman kung nag-file ba or hindi ba? Ano po talaga yung direction natin dito? Maraming salamat for that uh, question, uh, Evelyn. Naniniwala ako na ang tunay na the true success of any by bus is the conviction of the accused. That is why uh, nag-benchmarking ako sa DILG. I've asked the police to provide me uh, cases where they are right now, how many are pending, how many arrests were made, and how many convictions. For me, convictions are very, very important. Uh, we have made an interagency uh, task force together with uh, uh, Secretary Boying Remulia. Remember, when it comes to criminal cases, ang una pong pupuntahan ng kababayan natin ay ang kapulisyahan. At ang unang aharap ay ang investigador. So ang investigador ang gagawa ng demanda para sa iyo. Remember, medyo komplikado yan. Why? Dapat may working knowledge yan ng criminal law. Because dapat ilagay mo lahat ng elements of a crime, kung ano sinusumbong. Isang element mawala, pwede ma-dismiss ang kaso. So with this, we've made a, a program with the, the good secretary for a mentorship program. We will try to assess the capacity of our investigators, try to help them, give incentives. And even for the new police, magkakaroon kong may probably aptitude test to see who could be investigators because they are very, very material in this case. Number two, when it comes to drug cases, most of these are being dismissed on a technicality because of Article 21. Ano sinasabi ng Article 21? Once there is an arrest of this uh, evidence in court, it must be witnessed by two persons, a barangay official or a member of the media or 
a representative of the Department of Justice. Karamihan ng kaso, isa lang ang testigo, ang barangay. Anong nangyayari? Nadidismiss ang kaso. Masi kano kalaki, kano kahirap. In Mandaluyong, what my wife did, Mayor Menchi, she hired one employee, assigned the employee to the Department of Justice, ang trabaho na lang ay mag-witness sa lahat ng, dry, ng mga drug bust at tumistigo. And you know what? Wala na kaming dismissal technicality because of one single gesture of an LGU. That is why I requested the League of, of Cities Mayors, the League of Provincial uh, Governors, and of course, the League of uh, Municipalities, baka po pwedeng gawin nila yun. It, it's so... Wag na nating antayin maamenda ang batas. Let's work within the law. We have to fill in the gaps. Kung may gap na ganito, punuan na lang natin. Kaya nga nananawagan ako noon sa ating mga mga alcalde, local chief executive, baka pwedeng gawin yun. Just to hire. Okay. Another issue about this. When it comes to hearing, yung police na reassign sa ibang lugar, yung police na promote. At kung tatawagin na siya ngayon sa hearing, kung walang testigo, tandaan nyo yan, pwede ma-dismiss. Or, pwede na sabihin na the right to speedy trial. Hindi ba? Kung dire-diretsyo. So, I will be requesting the Supreme Court. No? Dahil merong body rin dito, if it's possible na magkaroon ng online hearing. In the event, yung kapulisyahan ay nasa malayong lugar let's say nasa Mindanao at nasa ano, baka po pwede online hearing na lang dahil maraming komplikasyon so these are the things we are doing right now we are trying to benchmark on things anong mga gaps dito, anong mga dapat gawin po natin dito again what is important is not the number of cases what is important are the quality of cases filed and not the arrest but rather the conviction at yung po ang drive namin dito sa DILG at sa PNP, of course, in cooperation with the Department of Justice. Okay. okay. Next question. Vince from Manila Standard. Sir, good afternoon po. Yes, Vince. Um, sir, will the government intensify its illegal drugs campaign, particularly in Metro Manila, following the accomplishments of the DILG on the San Fernando Pampanga by, uh, drug bust? Well, yes, uh, we will surely intensify the war on drugs. But, you know, for me, it's not just the police who should move on this. It is one thing that everyone should act on this. Parang may isang puno eh, hindi ba? Ang puno, may sanga. Putol ka ng putol ng saka, baka mamaya may tumubo. Kung gusto mong tanggalin ng puno, Tanggalin mo ang ugat ng puno. Ang sanga ay ang mga pusher. Ang mga pulis natin, inaalay ang buhay, kailangan talagang putulin ang putulin dahil lalaki ang sangang yan. Pero mas maganda siguro kung magtulungan tayo yung ugat nito, which is the community, the school, the family, everyone should help. And that is what the, the DILG would like to do. We will strengthen the Barangay Anti-Drug Abuse Council, go to the grassroots of everything, poverty, counseling to the, to the youth. No? We could do a lot of activities together, Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, mga kabataan. And who could better counsel a child, uh, a kid? Yun din kabataan. Eh. Kumisa, papagalitan ko, nanay, sabi, matanda ka na kasi, daddy. Eh. Pero yung barkada sa barkada, remember, peer pressure is different. And not only that, the rise of cyber crimes. Iba ngayon because of this online. Iba ang, ang na ano mga bata. So kailangan palakasin natin ang self-esteem. Gumawa tayong mga activities for the kids with one theme. Say no to drugs. So we're going to do this. Rest assured, the police will do its best together, of course, with the NBI. Sama-sama kami rito. But much more than that, we as a people, as a community, on the ground, grassroots, tulungan nyo rin po kami dito. Let's have this advocacy. Palakasin natin ang pag-igtingan natin lalong ganito. 
It could be through sports, culture, arts, singing. We could have themes every month. We could do this. Diba? As long as the kids will know na, oops, pangit pala yan, hindi maganda yan. Thank you. Chris Jose, remate. Sir, balikan ko lang po yung sa sumuko na NPA and ASG. Um, sir, may, may, dun po sa 100 na ASG, may, meron po bang leader ng ESG na nag-express ng intention. Ano uh, sumuko na po pala? Uh, I'm not so sure about the the leaders, no, but uh, I was informed talaga nagpapasalamat po ako dito sa uh, Intel ng PNP case governor sa Kurtan sa military, ah, sa military, no? Tuwang-tuwa dahil of course the ILG dahil this is the biggest uh, Chris, the biggest Abu Sayyaf group that uh, really surrendered. At marami pang iba. I assure you that sunod-sunod po ito. But what is important here is to make sure na talaga namang pag-surrender nila, akapi na natin yung programa ng gobyerno for them about livelihood, lahat po ay, ay magawa po natin. I think the slides are ready for the by bus, March. Okay na ba? I'm sorry, wala pa yata. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, uh, can you play it? Can you play it, please? Okay. Ah, hindi. Yan pala. No, hindi, hindi sa Baybash yan. That's the one in ano. Okay. Uh, yung kanina, that's the one in uh, Cagayan de Oro. Pero yung rebels came from Bukid noon. No? Yan ang drag by bus. I isa isang gas station yan na uh, may dumating na kotse. No? So, uh, next please. Paki ulit lang. So, yan. Kung makikita nyo, parang nakatsa eh. It's a T. May mga Chinese characters na nakalagay sa loob. That one is about 60 kilos, worth about 408 million street value of the drugs. Okay. It's one of the biggest drug haul this year. Thanks, of course, to the Philippine National Police, to General Dick Danao and his team, and of course, the Regional Director of uh, Region 3. Next, please. Wala, wala na ba? Wala na. Matipid yata kami sa picture dito eh. Oo. Uh -oh. Indiram ko lang sa mga major one next. Okay. Ah, I'm sorry but I have another meeting to go, huh? um, Okay. Sec, can you still accommodate two more questions? Oh, sige, sige. Last two. Um, Alvin Baltasar and then Vance Fernandez. Secretary, uh, magandang hapon po. Uh, yes. Tungkol doon po sa ASG at sa NPA. Ano po ba inoffer ng pamahalaan na tulong Uh, doon sa mga nagsisuko. Tsaka ano po yung nagtulak sa kanila para sumuko sila sa government? Uh, well, under our program, we've got an immediate assistance no, amounting to about 15,000. And we've got a livelihood assistance. We've got a reintegration assistance. And of course, firearms remuneration. Depende sa isusurrender na barel kung anong kalibri po ito. And of course, no, uh, meron pa rin uh, mga iba. No? Uh, meron pa rin medical assistance, access to government services, legal assistance, housing, and uh, iba pa mga programa ng pamahalaan. No? So, what is important is to make sure na yung integration back to the community, no? to the fold, talaga maging successful. And that is what we're working right now. Ang surrender isang araw lang yan eh. Pero ang problema yung ngayon, yung bukas. No, kaya nga, I've told our directors sa baba, no, interagency to talagang tulungan namin, akapin natin ang mga kababayan natin at mga kapatid natin. Secretary, follow up lang po. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, ilan na lang po ba yung pwersa ng NPA at ASG basa sa records niyo? Uh, well, ayoko muna sabihin sana rito eh, pero I assure you, yung sa Abu Sayyaf, konting-konti na lang. Okay? Konting-konti na lang. Uh, bubulong ko na lang sa iyo kung ilan pero <laughs> ayoko muna nga uh, sabihin on, on TV I assure you konting-konti na lang yes Secretary last question from Vance Fernandez yes good afternoon sir yes uh, Vance <clears throat> the DIL, DILD on Thursday highlighting the success of the whole of the government approach in dealing in, with armed communist conflicts ano? and touting towards continuing the highly successful policy, does the DILG and the Amarcus administration as a whole have any set expectation of the potential further success of the policy? Is the Philippines on the track to potentially 
or nullify the armed communist threat within the Marcos administration from this successful policy? Well, actually, no, ang uh, ating Pangulo ay talagang on hand po, po rito. Ang talagang puso niya, act, makikita naman, kampanya pa lang eh. Ano sinasabi niya? Sama-sama tayong babangon muli. It is from this theme na kaya kami gumagalaw. Sa totoo lang, ako, eh, hindi na yata ako nakaka-uwi ng bahay ko eh. Dere-derecho eh. No, dere-derecho talaga ito. Kasi gano'ng kasipag si Presidente. Hindi natutulog nga. Akala ko nung election tapos na eh. Yung pala, mas matindi pala nung naging Presidente. Talagang dere-derecho po kami rito. Well, yung kanyang theme going back na sinasabi niyang sama-sama tayong babangon muli. He really takes it to his heart. Wala may iwan po dito. That is why this kind of program, itong LCAC, itong ECLIP, talaga itutuloy namin because what is important here is not It's not the act or gesture of surrendering. What is important is the integration, that they will really feel that government is there for them, as it is for everyone. That is important. With this, I would like to thank the media. Huh? Maraming maraming salamat po. And of course, uh, Trixie, thank you so much. Magandang hapon po sa inyo. Thank you.